Hey everyone, it's Devin from the Maniology team with our weekly live every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. You can find us here on another nail stamping journey. Whether it's a tutorial, technique, or hack, we're here to discuss the details and we're so happy you could join. Also, we know you never want to miss a Maniology live, so make sure to hit that subscribe button if you love our videos. Remember to share our content with your friends and feel free to leave a comment with suggestions for future content. Also, we have a few reminders. Um, Maniology has, a f has just added a fresh batch of clothing and product merch to its store, allowing you to represent your passion and style. Whether you're a nail art enthusiast, a beauty guru, or fashion icon, there's something for everyone. Visit our store and grab your favorite pieces today. Hey everybody, hi Bees Nails, hi Polly's Girl. So happy you could join us, Angela, hello. Hello everyone. Hi Jessica. Okay, so today's topic is all about glitter. Um, I can't wait to talk to you about these things. I'm debating whether I want to go there or not for like a little topic. Um, I have I have some tea, <laughs> and it's the tea is a little spicy today. <laughs> so you all tell me if you want me to be if you want me to go there if you want me to just keep it sweet and simple. Um, hi everybody! Thanks for joining from North Carolina. Yay, Liz. I'm so happy you love the Blaze Glitter. Okay. <laughs> we want some hot and spicy tea. <laughs> All right. I am going to do the... Even though this is... I'm saying it's spicy tea, I'm telling you this is a sweetened version. Because if I really were to get into it, I would be unhinged. <laughs> um, okay. So we're talking about glitters today. And part of the reason we're talking about glitters today is because we received a very interesting um, email. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Um, that got very detailed about a lot of incorrect information. Um, so in general, maniology is so kind. Like, I do, unfortunately, way too much online shopping. And for our customer, like, products and price point, the price point of our products and the customer service we have is unmatched. Like, you could even go to, like, a really, really nice, um, like, designer store, spend $1,000, $2,000 on a handbag, and they will never be as nice to you as the Maniology customer service team. Like, those people... You know, Yoichi, for all of you who know, yo, the people who take care of our customer service are pure angels. They are so kind and patient. I, I am kind, but when it comes to that kind of stuff, I can be so spicy. Um, but again, this is not my business. So, yeah, we got a really interesting, uh, interesting email. And in general, sometimes we have people who like straight up... Um, make these really hard accusations, but unfortunately, how do I say this nicely? They are not fully aware of what they're saying, even though they come at us so strongly and so emotionally. Um, but again, maniology never points back and calls them out because they are a kind company. So yeah, this is Part of the reason we're talking about this today has something to do with that. So in general, <laughs> yes, for those of you who, who shop designer, you know, customer service, they'll be nice to you in the beginning, but after that, you're on your own. <laughs> um, so some things that I'm going to kind of talk about today is understanding the different types of glitter, holographic glitter, uh, holographic powders, and all those different fun little things that we want to talk about today. And Tiana is here to help out on the live so everybody say hi to tiana and yeah i know it's so interesting you know the yeah <laughs> i wanted to get so sassy I, I promise i do i feel like there's a lot of us who sometimes we want to get sassy but we're just like nope nope can't do that not going there so we we're not gonna go too deep into it um but 
Thanks for joining everybody. Um, something that you need to know about glitters. So glitters and powders are all different. They have different pigment sizes and different effects. So for example, can you all tell which two colors are holographic and which color is not? Type in the comments if you know which color is not holographic. One, two, or three. Let me see if I can even like move this out of the way. Yes, you all are correct. Okay, so obviously I have my A-team. You all know exactly what you're talking about when it comes to your sparkle. I'm very impressed. Um, holographic does not always mean that it's going to cast a rainbow linear hollow. That is not true. That is not the definition of holographic. Um, holographic has many different ways it shows up. So for all of you who said one is not holographic, you are correct. One is just a plain red glitter. Holographic, these other two are holographic glitters. And part of the reason they don't cast that linear hollow is because these are glitters, not powders. Glitters have a bigger pigment size and powders have an extremely fine, tiny micron size that is so, so small. Um, but just because it isn't a powder doesn't mean that it doesn't have a holographic nature to it. So when they make glitters and like holographic things, it's a coating that they put over something. So for example, imagine that they're, you know, I don't know exactly how to explain this. So these individual pigments on this red glitter do not have the holographic coating over it. It's just the metallic glitter. These glitters have the holographic coating over each individual piece of glitter and that's part of the reason why it has these like really really pretty sheen but even though these are both holographic glitters you don't see the hollow on this as much it's kind of there but not really and part of the reason you're seeing uh, the difference is because this is actually a smaller pigment size this is a larger pigment size so because this is a larger pigment size we do not see that holographic nature. So, and the thing is, it's interesting because when you go up with larger pigment sizes, sometimes you can see the hollow more, but there's like an in-between when it gets super small and sometimes you don't see that hollow finish, even though it is there. And then like this medium size where it's there, but you just don't see it as strongly when you apply it to certain surfaces. Yes, this is kind of the difference between linear and scattered hollow, but I feel like it's that, like the whole idea of like the linear scattered hollow, it comes from like a particular person. And I think we all know who coined all of these things. But I feel like it's more complex than that. We have these, you know, two broad terms to discuss this, but I think there's more than just that. There's more than just the scattered hollow effect and linear hollow effect because this isn't linear. So would these both be scattered? I feel like there's something, a term that's missing in between all of this. And I don't know what it is, unfortunately. So if you guys do know, feel free to comment below. Um, but <laughs> yes, yes, that's her. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there's other terms that I feel like don't exactly encompass all of the sparkle. And maybe we have to make up our own term. I'm not exactly sure. But I wanted to show the difference because 
you'll know better on what designs or what type of pigments or powders you should be looking for if you're trying to get a certain type of sparkle. So I'm doing it here with just three glitters and one of them is from the Alice in Wonderland Manny and Me box. And that's this one. And then this is just like some, this was from a very old glitter set that we used to sell. Or wait, no, maybe it was this one. I have so many little glitters. Is there a difference between holographic and dichromatic? I would want to say so. Dichromatic, usually, I feel like it's a two-toned color glitter. Let me see if I have some. like they okay this would be kind of like a dichromatic glitter but i feel like the general term that gets used is iridescent glitter um and usually the iridescent ones are kind of sheer like i don't know if you guys can tell but the pigment is actually clear it's like a gray clear it's not a solid like this is a solid metallic so it's got like a silver base and then it's got like red tint or whatever over it to make it look red and shiny like this but these ones they're clear and then they have like a rainbow or like a ab aurora coating over it um so that kind of gives it like a duochrome color effect so i feel like it could be categorized as dichromatic it could be categorized as duochrome um a lot of times when you have this kind of ab finish that's usually what it's like called for like crystals or aurora finish almost it it um has a clear base and then they put this like almost i don't know how to explain like a pearlescent iridescent finish over it so these are the things we're gonna get so in depth with our one-on-one -on -one <laughs> um glitter glitter briefing today so i just wanted to show you those three so that way you understand what it looks like when we start talking about our actual silver holographic glitters because i think here is a really good example it's a lot harder to tell with the silver holographic but we're we'll get into that in a second so now that you understand that let's talk about our silver holographic glitters yes exactly and even when you're shopping i think someone just saw i think rachel said something about how linear hollow is a pigment rather than a glitter i agree so the effect that it creates is going to be different um something i want to show you here is that with these these glitters are different sizes and even when you're searching and shopping if you type in holographic glitter it's going to be a different thing than holographic powder powder has an infinitely smaller pigment size it's usually measured in like microns and it creates that linear rainbow hollow effect in comparison to these and i can show you a little bit more about what it looks like so first let's start off with holographic glitter nail polish so the base of a holographic glitter nail polish is usually clear or it's a tinted base sometimes you know it can be colored bases we have polishes that are like that and these are having um, holographic glitters mixed into the formula so when i apply it and part of the reason i decided to do this on a black base is so that way you could see what the effect is it is scattered. The pigment sizes are larger. So it doesn't create that like strong rainbow effect. You get more of a sparkle. And you can see that the pigment sizes are spaced out, or sorry, the pigments are spaced out because they're suspended in a clear 
base. So this is our gleam, P124. The next one is going to be our holographic topper. Now, just looking at these two alone, you can already see that the pigment size is different when you look in the bottle. You can see every individual speck with this. And this one, it's kind of hard to see each individual speck. Because this is a topper and it ha it's in a clear base, it also creates oops, a more scattered effect. You can still strongly see the black base underneath, but it just adds a slight sparkle. This one to me kind of has more of that linear rainbow because I see on the outside, I have like a orange ring and then I see the blue in the center. And now with the two next to each other, you can see the difference. And this hollow topper is good because if you stamp underneath it, you're still going to be able to see the design. If, the, if there was too much pigment inside, it'd be really hard to see your design underneath. Hi, Rita. We're so happy you could join us. So that's the first two. Now let's talk about our glitters and our flakes. Tanisha, I'm so happy you could join our live today. What was the number of the hollow topper? I, if for all of you who are asking, we have the links in the bottom. So if you check the product description, these all the hollow products that I'm using today are linked. The only things that are not linked are the red glitters, but um, two of the red glitters we don't even sell. They're like old things that we used to have, but I just needed to show you an example so that way you understood for color and how that looks different than using silver. So now let's discuss our glitters. Okay, I'm going to start off with the biggest pigment size. So this is a it's not exactly a shard, or well, it's not exactly a flake. It's almost more like a shard. And this was a part of our Manny by Me stained glass. So I use a very specific stamper. Look at this stamper. It is, she is beat up. <laughs> she has been through a lot of manicures. Um, so I use a stamper like this, and as you can see, it's torn too. So if you have any torn stampers and the tears aren't too bad, it's like that, you can either continue to stamp with it or you can just use it for glitter. I recommend using a stamper that, just like allocating one stamper for glitters and powders. Do not use the stamper that you use to regularly stamp and then dip it in glitters and powders. Eventually, for some reason, it changes the silicone and makes it milky. Um, if you're using like a clear stamper. So yeah, that's tip number one when you're working with glitter. Make sure to use one that is not brand new and that you use for stamping. So look at this. I just barely touched it in there and now we already have the shards all over the place. So I'm just going to use my finger to kind of rub it in and on to the stamper. Part of the reason I prefer to use the stamper to apply the glitter is because I notice it creates a really nice effect. So even when I stamp this on, all the pigments are gonna lay flat so it's not gonna stick out. And I'll show you in a little bit. Oh, that makes sense, Maria. 
So Maria said that she believes that the powder etches the surface of the stamper and creates basically a bunch of micro scratches. And that's part of the reason the stamper goes milky. Yes, I think you all are right. So this is what our shards from, I think it's called glass shards, from the old Manny by Me box. I'm going to be using the sticky base since my base color is dry, but if I was actually working on nails right now, I would just apply a silver base or a silver hollow base and then whoop, that was a lot so if I was actually working on nails and I wanted to create a full hollow look I would use either a silver polish or a silver hollow polish so for example I could take this silver polish or wait sorry a silver base and then apply this type of glitter topper over it or use this topper over it so that way it kind of fills in the gaps so when you apply your glitters over it completely hides everything and it'll just look like a full silver hollow nail especially if I don't have um, a pigment that is super fine like this because this we already know is going to create a perfect full hollow it's going to look so good but because i'm using larger pigments it might get a little splotchy and so if you use a silver base it'll hide all of that splotchiness and the eye is just going to focus on all the sparkle but Today, I'm not using the silver base underneath because I want you to be able to see the space in between each pigment and also see the different effects and what kind of things that they create. Yes, this is Crushed Glass NA031. Thank you, Rochelle. So let's see if this is dry. Oh, no, not exactly way too sticky maybe I should apply mm, maybe I'll wait okay better yay so go ahead and just stamp that on and there we go now look at when I turn this to the side you see that it's completely flat so we're not going to have any pigments sticking up and poking us or scratching us when you accidentally touch your face, especially if you coat this with like a top coat or a smudge free. It'll be nice and smooth and you'll still get all that sparkle. And you can tell that this is much larger than our other fine sparkles. Yes, it is like a disco ball on your fingers. Can you all see the individual pigments? I'm trying to figure out if this would be better when I zoom in or if I need to kind of stay still and have the camera a little bit further away to pick up all the sparkle. I feel like this just looks so pretty. It, it sticks out. Okay, <clears throat> let's clean up and work on the next nail. And actually, while I'm cleaning up, or before I clean up, I should apply the sticky base. So that way it can dry while I'm cleaning. Right? This glass shards does grab all the light. It's so pretty. Oh, 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 oh. For those of you that are saying you want the glitter, it is in the link below. Okay. 
Okay, so while those two are drying, to clean your stamper, you're gonna use a sticky stamper station or you could use scotch tape, whatever you want, and you just go ahead and do this. And now my stamper is clean and ready to be used with other stuff. So next I'm gonna do our holographic glitter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, whoa, this is so interesting that this happens because of, um, I don't know, the friction. It creates this like, <laughs> this spiky effect, static, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I am not a master of words. As we all know, I'm also not a master of cars. Um, but I do know a lot about nails. So we're just going to go ahead and rub this into the stamper. So unfortunately, I'm wasting some today, but it's okay. We have I have an abundance of glitter, probably too much. <laughs> I have an abundance of nail supplies. That is something where I know I will never be without. <laughs> I have so much nail supplies. <laughs> okay, so again, when you're working with your glitters, always brush it off so that way the surface looks smooth you want it to create a nice smooth even layer on your stamper as much as possible so we created a nice smooth even layer you don't want you'll know it's like done because you won't have so much product sticking to your finger so i think this is ready to go now let me touch with a clean finger yep Perfect. Okay, so this is our holographic glitter. Now, traditionally, if you are trying to get that full coverage look, you would just use whatever's on here and keep stamping and pressing down so that way it kind of covers all the spots. But again, if you have a silver base or a holographic silver base, you're not even gonna see the little gaps that you see here but we decided to paint it black so that way you'd be able to see the pigment size and the different effects it creates so this is what holographic glitter creates and this is not this is a smaller glitter this is a finer size i want to say that when you're in a craft store you're probably going to see one size even smaller than this but this size is more commonly seen in crafting supplies. Um, like you'll find it at Michael's or maybe Dollar Tree stores, things like that. Amazon, all of those places have that kind of glitter size. Now the last one that we're gonna focus on is our Hello, Hella Hollow Powder. So when you're looking for that super full linear hollow effect, you're going to want to search for hollow powder. Hollow powder usually is not sold at craft stores. Um, maybe some specialty stores you might be able to find it, but I would say that you're only going to find it when you're looking for like nail supply stuff or cosmetic stuff. That's usually when it shows up or I've seen it for like paint. Like if you're trying to make your own custom paints and you want a holographic paint, then sometimes they'll be selling this. What was the last one called? The last one was not a glitter that we sell. We used to sell this glitter a very long time ago. We had like a huge pack, but this was like years ago before it was Maniology. This was like when it was Bundle Monster. Okay, let's see if this works. Now look at the difference. 
So this is the Hella Hollow Powder. So again, if you're looking for this effect, the search term is always going to be powder. If you search glitter, you're always going to get this kind of stuff. If you search powder, you'll get this. And remember how I said at craft stores you can usually find a glitter size that's like one smaller than this? Even that smaller glitter size is not going to create this. Only hollow powder will create this. Or like for nails, um, when you're searching for duochrome powders or things like that, it, it's always powders because they're the smallest pigment size they're going to create the highest shine. I don't know if that makes sense to y'all, <laughs> but um, I don't really know how else to explain that. Um, yeah, so... Mani yes, that's true. Maniology powders, because we um, go through a process and we try to vet our products and, you know, make sure it's not just any old thing... If we call it a powder, you're going to get a powder and you're going to get the effect that it's meant. If we're calling it a glitter, you're going to get a glitter. So there isn't any like weird marketing terms there that's going to trip you up. So again, if it's listed as a glitter, you're going to get something like this. If it's a powder, you'll definitely get whatever the powder effect is, whether it's a duochrome effect or a chromatic, you know, super high shine metal effect. Or for example, this is the linear hollow effect. Yes, so when you're looking on Etsy or when you're just looking online, you have to type in powder. But again, not all powders are created equally. Some powders are prettier and some powders are, again, not as high shine. Sometimes they can be a little bit like muddled or foggy. And part of the reason for that is because pigments, like this type of pigment, it's so insanely expensive. And if you look online and you try to shop for pigments, um, especially if it's like any reputable brand, the a lot of companies will charge like exorbitant amounts. Like it's $25 for like a tiny one gram. And when I say one gram, meaning like the amount of the actual powder, not just the container size, uh, they're really, really expensive. So for maniology, in order for us to keep the prices more fair, we unfortunately have to give less product because we could give you the full large thing, but then it would cost like $25 and up for like a whole thing of powder. And honestly, you don't need that much because I've had this one for years and you know, you saw how much I used. It was just like a tiny amount. So if I was doing more nails, I would try to make use of all this other stuff and just keep going until this whole stamper is cleaned off. Yes, powders are expensive because this is basically raw, like raw pigments. So even for chrome pigments or metallic pigments, duochrome pigments, it's really, really expensive to have certain um, pigments. And some colors are more expensive than others. Some finishes are more expensive than others. So it just depends. And it just has to do with like sourcing and the raw materials that are used. But our hollow is so pretty, and I think you will love all of them. Yes, Nelly, thank you so much for helping me <laughs> try to say the right words because obviously I have a million things running through my head. So the weight versus the volume. So all of ours, I believe, is about like a half a gram for the actual volume of powder. And then with the container, I think it's like a gram, I want to say. But these are kind of what it looks like. So now I'm going to show you what happens when we top coat because things change when you apply top coat. Maybe not so much for this, but for this, things change sometimes. And part of the reason things change and the effect changes it's not because the effect is being like wiped off or something like that. It's just because once you apply a top coat, it changes how light hits the pigment. And yes, you can stamp over these. So I'm going to go ahead and 
apply are smudge free. Also, if you're doing this, make sure to use a top coat that you don't mind if it gets glitter. So I have one specifically just for glitters. I don't mix it and use it on anything else. So if I'm using glitters or chromes, I'm going to use this top coat. Oh, and the other thing that I forgot to tell you. If you have any excess pigment on your nail tips or on your nails, you want to make sure you clean that off before you go ahead and apply your top coat because if you don't, your brush is going to pick up all of that pigment. So you can just take a clean stamper and then just go over the design and just stamp like this. And then it picks up any excess loose stuff. So that way it reduces the amount of chances that pigments are going to end up inside your polish. So you can go ahead and just do that to the other ones if you want. So this will just catch any of that fallout, you see? And for these nails, I applied a red base. And because I applied a red base, you can't tell that it's slightly splotchy because that red base underneath basically hides all those little holes and gaps. I'm not even gonna, well, let's do it with this one too. I wasn't gonna because I was like, well, you know, this is just a demonstration, it's okay. Plus I already am using the special top coat that is specifically designated for using glitters and pigments, but for consistency, <laughs> I'll do it anyways. So when we apply our smudge-free top coat, it doesn't affect the metallic glitter too much, like the plain metallic glitter. You're still gonna get a nice, pretty, sparkly effect. But sometimes when you apply top coat over a holographic polish, Sometimes it affects how the holographic polish looks. And part of that has to do with the fact that we're putting another coating on it. So I feel like it changes how the light hits the sparkle and it distorts the sparkle. I recommend using the smudge free top coat and then you could apply like your regular top coats over it if you want. But the smudge free is in, I think, I believe it's like an oil based formula. And because it's an oil based formula, it's less likely to mess with the pigments. Although all of our pigments are solvent resistant. So for example, it doesn't like bleed. because some glitters and things like that do bleed. So when you're at the craft store and you're shopping, they'll let you know whether it's a solvent resistant glitter or whether it's just like a regular glitter. And regular glitters, when you apply like top coats or things on top of it, they'll have a tendency to bleed and then it'll be like silver and then maybe if the glitter's purple you'll start to notice that parts of it look kind of patchy some parts might look that purple while other parts might look a little bit more silver than you thought also when you are using the smudge free top coat during the drying process things look a little funky sometimes so just don't worry about it just let it go and eventually the cloudiness that you may see on it will clear up once it's fully dried. So here, I don't know if you guys can tell, the center here looks a little cloudy, but on the sides, it cleared up and it's nice and clear and sparkly. But right in the center, it looks a little bit more milky. I think we'll see this more when I do the silver hollow. Hi, Grandma Mimsy, I'm happy you could make it. I was wondering where you were. I was thinking, 
hey, I haven't seen a... <laughs> hey, every... Usually you uh, say hello to everybody and I didn't see it, so I wasn't sure if I missed it. Yes, the center did look lighter than the edges. Okay, now let's go ahead and top coat these so that way you can see the difference. Because this is a polish and the glitter is suspended in polish, I don't think it's going to have any sort of negative effect on it. I think it's going to look exactly the same. And this is a topper, again, also suspended in polish, so I don't think we're going to see any dramatic changes. Let's see what happens when we top coat these. I am using a generous layer of top coat for this. And again, this is just the smudge free top. I recommend when you're working with this, use a very generous layer of top coat because you don't want to disturb the pigments, so I'm kind of using the floating method. I wonder if we're gonna see this one get milky first before it dries. So if you try to use regular top coat on a chrome powder, and this is any type of nail powder, so if it's a silver chrome powder, a holographic powder, any type of powders, if you use just a regular top coat, it will turn it milky and make it weird. So the smudge free, um, during the drying process, it sometimes gets milky, but once it dries completely, it's clear and it'll be fine. And it will more than likely continue to show that nice, pretty shine. So this top coat works well with foils, powders, and other types of pigments. It helps to preserve the sparkly. So, as you can see, so far we... Oh, here, this is a good one. Look at this. Can you see this here? It looks almost gray. And I think because it's in the drying process right now, the sides of the nail look nice and holographic, but the center is doing some kind of weird stuff right now. And I think that's just because it's still very wet. We should go back and take a look at our red glitter. Yep, it all cleared up. It's not lighter in the center anymore. It's nice and shimmery. And then when I turn it to the side, it's smooth to the touch. So if you're trying to wear this for long term, you would apply a speed dry top coat over this. And Glitter, as we all know, can be so difficult to remove. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to remove it as well. Hi, Christine. Let's take a look at this again. Yep, it's still kind of silvery right in the center. It hasn't fully dried. So right now it looks like just plain silver glitter right here or like silver shards, where on the sides you can see we have that like rainbow hollow effect. But here it's kind of weird right now. So it just needs more time to dry. I'm surprised that the hollow isn't doing the foggy effect. It still looks really good. Now let's talk about how to remove glitter because I know everyone's always curious. Glitter is one of the things most people hate removing because it's just so involved. So today I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna need 100% acetone. I am gonna apply some to this cotton pad. And when I say drench your cotton pad, drench it. If you're using a cotton pad or a, a cotton ball, make sure it's completely soaked. And then you're just going to put it on top. 
I wonder if I added enough. I'm gonna apply more. So you're just gonna leave it there. The way I usually like to do this if I'm doing it on nails is you would just take one cotton ball and pull it apart so that way it makes five different pieces. Put all of them in acetone until they're like completely drenched and then put each one on your finger and just keep it still for a couple of seconds, maybe 30 seconds to a minute max, and then come back to it. And voila, look at that one swipe and we got off so much product. Because it basically had time to get under all those layers of glitter and polish. And now it's so much easier to remove. Now let me show you what happens when you are impatient. <laughs> okay, same process, or well, different process, but that's what happens when you try to just rub glitter immediately off. You're gonna get this and it's gonna be so irritating. And look at that, it doesn't even wanna budge, right? This is what usually happens. Oh, also I'm happy I can show you this. Okay, do you see this? So solvent, like glitter that is um, not solvent resistant, when you apply top coat or solvents over it, or you mix it into resin or whatever you're using your like project with, mix it with glue, the red or whatever color pigment it is, that color will eventually come off in the solvent. So when I applied my top coat, the red would have wiped off when I was applying the top coat because the glitter is not solvent resistant. But again, Maniology's glitters are all solvent resistant. So when you apply top coat over it, um, it won't get the color to come off. Yep, the color bled right out. And of course, now the, cl the color's bleeding out because I'm using acetone. So in that case, any glitter is going to like bleed out in that way, but it's when it's applied or mixed into some kind of clear solvent, um, the glitter bleeds, that means that it's not solvent resistant. So Maniology's glitters and powders are all solvent resistant, which is why they look the same color even after I applied top. So this is what happens when you try to struggle and take it off versus earlier where I just left it on there for about, what, 30 seconds? Even now I could probably just leave this on there for a few seconds. one stroke if you do this properly it should all come off within like one to two strokes so when you leave it on there to soak for a couple of seconds just hold it down and then give it a good strong press don't just like lightly just like really put some pressure on it and then wipe it off And that is how you clean off glitter. Do any of you have any questions so far? Let's take a look at this. Oh, yep, completely clear. Look at this, no weird milky stuff. It dried and it looks beautiful. T, did I miss any questions? Taking off glitter and glitter polish isn't fun. That's true. With a little patience, it'll come off so simply. Oh, good. I'm so happy to see that all of you kind of answered the question, or I answered your questions, or maybe you helped each other answer your questions. Um, but that's pretty much it for today's live. Let me show you... 
stamp over hollow powder. Yes, you can definitely stamp over glitters or powders. You just have to make sure that before you stamp, um, always top coat it with your smudge free first, wait for it to dry, and then stamp over. If you stamp, for example, if this didn't have top coat and I tried to stamp on it, when I pull the stamper away, this stamper might not fully transfer because some of the pigments might be loose. And so if the pigments are loose, when you pull away the stamper, those loose pigments might also rip up some of the stamp. And then you'd have like a shoddy stamp. So whenever you're stamping with um, over powders, glitters, pigments, uh, make sure to top coat with smudge free and wait till that completely dries. And then you have a nice sparkly base that's ready to stamp with. Thank you so much, Lisa. Today I felt like I was really struggling to find the right words <laughs> to describe what it is that I'm telling you all, but I'm happy you guys are still able to catch what it was that I was saying. Well, I hope you all have an amazing day. Oh, can you take off the crushed glass the same way? Yes, you can. Any pigments, glitters, powders, um, you can take off the exact same way. Just let it soak on your nail for like 30 seconds and then give it a strong, firm wipe. Yay. Well, thank you, everyone. I think we're going to wrap it up. So I hope you all have an amazing week and we will talk to you a little later. Bye, everybody.